Hey everyone, so I kind of just wanted to update you. Um, it's been two weeks since I last did a video. Um, I have been this quarter, I don't even know where to start. Um, do I have a new hair thing here? I have a break on and it's loose and keeps. Uh, anyhow, this quarter has been definitely one of the hardest. Um, I know last quarter. I was extremely looking forward to the break. It was something I really, really needed. Um, I needed it physically, emotionally, and mentally. I was just drained. This quarter, in much the same way, it's not that I'm looking forward to break um, because I need it so much as it means that this quarter will be over. Um, this quarter is definitely trying and stressful. It's different. Um, there's not a lot of direction given. There's not a lot of explanations. It's it's difficult. And our whole class has pretty much said that. We have a Facebook group going um, for just our group of nursing students. And it has been used more this quarter in the first three weeks alone in the class. I mean, we're in week seven now. Um, but in the first three weeks alone, we used our Facebook group more than we'd ever used it. Um, communicating, trying to figure out what was what, when we were supposed to be at class, when exams were, when, like, we communicating, like, oh, I found this, this might be helpful to study, I found this. Um, we just used it a lot more. And that's pretty much been a constant theme this quarter. So, let's see, two weeks ago, I think I... Um, told you guys I had t three exams. Um, I had the exam two in both classes, and then I also had an ATI proctored exam. And something I just want to touch on really quickly with the ATI proctored exam was that on there's an app, and um, you probably noticed the cover photo. These are pretty much my go to apps for nursing school. Um, I have a little folder for all of them. I mean, the one is my school email account set up through it, um, but the other one, the Skyscape app, is really good for if you're looking up um, drugs, giving all the information on drugs, counterindications, um, classifications, teaching points, assessments, that kind of thing, um, as well as you can go in to the app, and here's the, well, it does a question, NCLEX question of the week, but... Um, here is the, I don't know if you can see this, here's the Davis Drug Guide, which is really helpful. Maybe if I turn this light off. Is that helpful? No. Um, let's see if I can get this so you can see. Is that helpful? Trial and error, guys. Okay, anyhow, this second app here is the, um, there you go, Davis Drug Guide. It's super helpful. Um, that's where you go, and I mean, it has every single drug. And you can type up here in the top, it has a look for, just type the name. So, clindamycin just came to my head. Okay, so there's clindamycin. So, you tap it, and it comes up with. I have it set up to come up first with the classification that it is under. Um, but it comes up with the classification, um, you know, the therapeutic levels. It has um, potential nursing diagnoses for it. It has patient education, family teaching. Um, it has Y site compatibility, interactions, drug to drug, if there's any drug to food. Um, adverse side effects. It'll have all the adverse side effects listed and then if it's underlined or in red, bold, um, those are ones that are more common. So like this one is diarrhea and pseudomembranous colitis. So diarrhea is underlined so it's the most common and pseudomembrane, pseudomembrane, I can't say it right now. I'm focusing too hard on saying it. But anyhow, those ones that are in red, those are the like um, anaphylaxis, things that are life-threatening. But this app is really, really helpful. And um, the other one that I was mostly actually going to point out to you guys for ATI proctored exams and something that I would really use to focus, and this is what I use on the exams, is this RN Mentor. It's a free app. 
um, and it is super helpful. If you click on it, it takes you in. You can create a new quiz. You can create customized quiz based on either cl NCLEX area, clinical area, or body function. So I usually go to clinical area. And then you can set here how many questions you want. I have it set right now to 50 at a time. Um, and then it has like all the subtopics available that you can get quizzed on. And it's super helpful for studying for those ATI proctored exams just because it's the same content. Um, and when you answer questions, it gives you, um, you can look at, you know, previous question, question reviews. It gives you um, areas to look at. It gives you rationales for those questions and the answers. Um, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. It's kind of hit or miss. But the other app I was going to show you guys is this NCLEX RN, which is NCLEX RN Mastery. Um, it was on sale. I got it last week. I had like the free version, which I recommend if you know you're just starting out or whatever. But definitely look into it if you're going to pursue nursing, pursuing it in the future. Um, it's twenty nine ninety nine, I believe, for the full. Um, app but you click on it questions and it has different categories of questions and so let's say we go to med surge it comes up with all the subcategories um, hematology and immunology cardiovascular respiratory gastrointestinal metabolic and endocrine genital urinary musculoskeletal and um, and then it has like the questions on there and it has thousands and thousands of questions um, but I also really like this too because you can set on here. Is it my progress? No. Oh, you can set on here. I don't, I need to redo this because 9 o'clock is usually too late. But it has on here where you can set, um, you know, study goals. So 20 questions a day. Um, and I just have it set to remind me at 9. Um, but I'm going to do more than 20 questions a day just because it, it's good practice. It's good to go over and refresh your mind. Um, but anyhow, that RN Mentor is what I use for ATI. It is an ATI app. Um, and so that's how I study for the proctored exams. And for the most part, I score a level 2 or a level 3. Um, most of the time, it's level 2. And that's what our school, at least right now, requires us to be getting is level 2s. <clears throat> um, last weekend was my birthday, and so we went to the beach, and it was kind of nice to just have a weekend to, in the midst of this crazy quarter, kind of just catch my breath and reorient myself and get my head on straight and focused again. Um, so we went to the beach and just spent the weekend there. My family, my boyfriend came along. Um, it was just very nice, very relaxing, um... It was, I went Friday after exams and was there Saturday, and we came back Sunday. Um, we were able to stop, thankfully, and see his um, sister and husband. They're married. Um, and it was just really good. I haven't seen her since she graduated college, which was probably eight years ago, seven years ago. So it's been a long time since I've seen them. Um, and I know it's been a while since he's seen them as well, so it was really good just to hang out. We had lunch, um, played catchphrase, and just hung out for a couple hours. Um, but it was just a good time, like, weekend to unwind and refocus, and I needed that, like, me time, if that makes sense. Um, but our exams last week, I ended up getting a... I don't remember, honestly. I got a 72 on my nursing exam, which I don't know if you guys remember this, but 72 for me is not good. Like, personally, that is not a good score for someone who's used to getting A's. Um, but this quarter has been rough, and our exams, like last Friday, we had three exams back to back to back. It was extremely stressful. By the time we were done with the first exam and a half, you know, your brain starts shutting down. 
Um, you're, it's not even like they say it's good practice for the NCLEX because you're going to have to answer, you know, up to 300 questions or whatever, but it really isn't the same. Um, at least there you're kind of in the mindset of this is one exam rather than three different exams on different content. Um, and yes, NCLEX is all inclusive, it's a comprehensive exam, but it's still, it's just so stressful and, um, and it's exhausting. <laughs> To be honest, when we were taking the ATI, I was struggling to stay awake. Like, I usually finish in time, so I literally took five minutes and just sat there and just recomposed myself, um, took some deep breaths, just kind of had like a five-minute relaxation during the test so that I could focus on the questions and get my mind back on because I was just, I was frustrated. Um, and it's been a sore topic with a lot of our classmates. Um, and to be honest, this quarter has pulled our class apart so much. Um, and people have been like attacking the teacher and they've been writing to the dean of the school. They've been writing to the dean of our whole entire nursing program. Um, not just our, you know, little subdivision, but everyone. Um, and I really think that they've just handled it all wrong. So I've kind of just stayed out of the picture, it's not commented anything. Um, but I feel like they're just they're handling it very wrong um, and they're using kind of like an attacking um, and in the end that's not gonna that's not gonna get anything done that's it's I think it's making it actually our this quarter gonna be worse um, because I mean I don't want to get into all of that but it's just I don't I don't think it's going to be a wonderful quarter it's just it's gonna be very tiring it's gonna be very hard very stressful um, I definitely think it's going to tick off our teacher um, and going to cause her to be a lot more strict and um, we already don't feel like we're being taught by her that much really for exams because we get into the exam and there's questions on there that we've not seen. Not only that, there have been questions on this last exam that we had about things that are mentioned nowhere in our books. Like we came home and searched them in all of our every single one of our textbooks. You can search, and so we searched this thing in our book, and it is not mentioned in any of our textbooks. So we're all you know frustrated. And why is it on the exam? Why? not covered in class. I mean, why put something on an exam that isn't in any of our textbooks that you've not taught us? Like, it's just stuff like that, really, that's been happening with our exams. And personally, yes, the 72, it's not passing by my school standards, which a 78 is passing. Um, it's not horrible, but why put questions like that on an exam, or why give an exam like that, and then already expect to give points back to your students it just it doesn't make sense and it doesn't add up and it is very frustrating and maybe some of you are experiencing it as well um, I understand if so you know the stress and I'm sure you guys will then understand a little bit of kind of what I'm going through but I'm honestly just trying to let it roll off and keep plugging actually yesterday we were informed because our first exam she gave so many points back to the class um, and some people didn't get the full points and complained. Um, she actually emailed us yesterday informing us that tomorrow in class we will be doing an exam one retake and that she will take our highest grade and put that in the grade book. So not only am I already studying for the third exam but I'm just now being told a day and a half in advance that we're gonna have an exam tomorrow on information we've already covered we've moved on from yes we're not supposed to forget it and no I haven't forgotten it but I'm already mentally focused on exam number three and you're throwing an exam at me randomly that I'm not I don't feel prepared for like it's just very frustrating and so I got an 82 on the first exam, so I'm not completely stressing out about tomorrow. Um, I have a course project due. I have a lot of things already due this week that I'm kind of focused on, and I've already like built my calendar around this week already without that exam in there. So I am studying a little bit for it. I studied some last night with a friend. Um, I've been answering questions um, on my app, my ATI app. Um, and the NCLEX app based on that category that the exam's on and I'm just gonna go with that and hope that if I do better then I do better and she takes that score if not then I keep the score that I had um, 
which would be the 82, which again, it's kind of low, but it's better than what it could be. Um, so that's frustrating. But onto a, a lighter, happier note and not a complaining note. Um, Monday in clinical, I was in the ED again, and I loved it. Um, the ED was an area that I was looking at going into, um, you know, professionally later on. And so it was really interesting to get the experience. I was able to work with a nurse um, who had an accent that I loved, but it was definitely, like, took me a few minutes to, like, understand what she was saying. But she was super sweet. She was very helpful, um, great at teaching and great at explaining things to me that I didn't know. She taught me how to take an EKG. Um, she let me kind of do whatever I wanted. I was able to insert an IV into my first patient and he was super funny about it and you know very cool I got it on the first try on the first try and my clinical like um, lab instructors always make fun of me because my emotions are very prevalent on my face and um, very animated so when I do something I'm like um, something that whenever I do a catheter I always have to look away from the patient because when I insert the balloon which now they're saying EBP wise is not actually necessary to be done before inserting the catheter in the patient, just fully catheter, just in case you were wondering. Um, research that for yourselves. I still do it just because I would rather pop the balloon outside of the patient than stick it in and have it not work and have to stick it back in the patient. Like, the one time that you, I feel like I would do that would be when the, the balloon doesn't work. And then I have a mess on my hands. So, I check the balloon still until I'm told not to. But whenever I inflate the balloon, I always, actually if I walk through right now, you'll see my face, but it's, I just remember when I was being checked off for it in lab, my, my nurses, or my um, instructor was like, yeah, you really need to watch your faces because it's, everything is visible on your face. Um, but if I insert the balloon, I always make a face, so I have to look away from the patient because I, like, make a face like it's going to explode. So when I, like, finally stuck the patient, I got the IV, and I was like, ooh, when I saw the flash, um, nurses live for the flash, you'll hear that if you haven't heard it already, but I saw the flash, and I was so proud, like, I just was like, ooh, and my, um, patient just started laughing, I was like, I'm sorry, I was like, that was just very exciting, um, but I was able to insert my first IV on him and some more. Um, I was able to DC a lot of IVs as patients left. Um, I was able to DC a fully. Um, I was taught EKGs. I put tele monitors on. Um, I gave meds. Um, primed IVs uh, or tubing um, bags. I hung bags. I was able to do chest compressions. Um, I was able to run, take blood draws, um, run them to the lab, do blood culture. Um, I was able to do an in and out cath, which I've done fully catheters before, but I'd never done an in and out cath. I was able to do an in and out catheter on a patient, um, and her urine was. Well, it honestly looked like cottage cheese. I wasn't able to get much, probably only about that much. Um, but it looked like cottage cheese, and my doctor that was working with us on a lot of our patients, he was very funny and was like, you had to show me that before lunch. I was like, I wanted to make sure, you know, my nurse is standing there, and I kind of looked at her, I was like, am I in the right place? You know, because I thought I was, but it didn't look like it was supposed to be coming out. She's like, yeah, you're in the right place. Um, and so afterwards, that when we, you know, we left the room, I said, this doesn't look right. Like, it looks really, really bad. It looked like cottage cheese. Sorry if anyone's eating cottage cheese while watching this video. But you're a nurse, or you're going to be a nurse, so... Um, but <laughs> she was like, no, I've never seen it that bad before. Um, and even my doctor, he, after joking around, he was like, no, that, that looks disgusting, and there's definitely something wrong. Um, so he definitely wanted a culture. But that was cool to do my first in and out, um... I'm sure it won't be my last. I was also able, I also had my first inpatient, or inpatient, inmate um, in the ED this week, and it was a different experience. I wasn't nervous like I thought I might be. Um, he came in for extreme decrease in LOC. Um, he 
we couldn't get him to talk really. All we got out of him were grunts. Um, and so <clears throat> I was able to start an IV and draw blood um, samples from him and test those. I tested the troponin and um, <coughs> ran his electrolytes. Um, and then kind of did some basic care for him. It was really funny. Actually, one of his guards that was there, he came in with two guards. One of the guards, um, I was in the room, and he was like, I know you. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know him, didn't recognize him at all. And he was like, you're in my living room. And, I like, as a nurse, you have that HIPAA kind of thing where you don't want to give information of yourself either. But as soon as he said that, I was like, okay, hold up. I was like, I'm in your living room? I was like, excuse me? And he was like, yeah, you're in a picture with my daughter. And I was like, well, who's your daughter? And so he told me his daughter's name. And I was like, oh, yeah. It turns out I went to high school with his daughter. Um, we were in several clubs, several, you know, academic programs together, several classes together. We were in honors and IB, or honors classes together. Um, and so it was just... After that, I was like, okay, but at first I was just like, I'm in your living room? What? I was like, how do I know you? You know, you, that kind of like, you, you know, your personal space almost feels invaded in a sense. Like, okay, I don't know you. Like, I have no idea who you are. Um, so it was actually really funny, but um, we were talking a little bit afterwards. But really for that patient, that was all I really did for him um, because then I had to leave for post-conference. But it was very interesting. Um, I handled the situation fine. Um, I wasn't nervous. I treated him like any other patient, um, which is what you're supposed to do. And I was proud of myself for that because a lot of times, and it's very common that you hear it in um, nurses. I mean, I heard it already that day where they automatically judge and are prejudiced against it and I really really appreciate my nurse for this in this aspect um, there were other times throughout the day where I did not agree with things she said or did but she had a history of working in the jail and so she was comfortable around this patient and I think that helped my comfort because I never once was nervous I never once questioned whether my per safety was an issue um, even when going in and doing blood draws off of his IV, um, I never once second-guessed or questioned or had any fears. Um, I never once treated him like scum, you know. I treated him like I would any other patient off the street. I treated him like I would family. And I think that level of um, ethical nursing practice and that patient-centered care is so important to continue to have. Um, and I say that because earlier that morning, um, the very first patient my nurse and I got off the ambulance was a 16-year-old male who was diabetic. Um, and at our school, we don't like to say they they are non-compliant because you don't know their story. Um, but this child kid this patient was very much non-compliant he came in with a blood sugar of 489 um i was able to actually smell that fruity breath that you talk about or you hear talked about in nursing and you're like okay yeah like he definitely sounded smelled sweet walking into like the little cubicle or getting close to him i almost thought i was in like a candy store like you know those 50s candy stores because that sweet smell was so strong um, but his blood sugar was extremely high, and when I asked him, um, you know, when was the last time you took your insulin? Have you been taking your insulin? And he's like, no, I've been working the streets the past three days. Um, and the area we're in is pretty sketchy, so when he said that, I was like, okay, and I was starting to get a little bit more information about him. Um, found out his girlfriend is pregnant. He's 16 years old. Um, and while I might not personally agree with everything he was telling me as a patient, um, I, I kept a professional face. I kept a professional attitude, and I treated him like a human being. He is allowed to make his own decisions. He's allowed to not take his medication. That's his choice. I can't physically force anyone to do anything. Um, 
And another thing he threw out the care form, he probably at least 75 million times asked me if he could leave the hospital to go smoke. He just needed to go smoke. Or um, at one point I was spiking in his next IV bag because we were running normal saline wide open. I was spiking his thing to hang it and he said, how much trouble do you think I would get in if I ran across the street to checkers and smoked and came back? And I was like, well, honestly, you'd get in a lot of trouble, and you would have to readmit yourself, because once you leave, you would be leaving AMA, I said. But you would get in a lot of trouble. He never actually did leave, although I was kind of concerned that he would pull his IVs out and go. Um, when the nurse respiratory came in to do ABGs on him, because the doctor wanted to know his pH level, he was adamant against it. Um, adamantly against it, not wanting it to the point he almost caused the respiratory therapist or respiratory nurse to stick herself. Um, so I was like, "You honest?" I said, "He's refusing. You need to stop. You need to, you know." I was advocating for the patient. While I might not have agreed, I was still advocating, and also for the safety of her because, I mean, at that point, there's nothing you can do. Um, his mom wasn't there. She was on his, her way in. She probably stayed for all of three minutes. I don't know. I know she has other kids, so I'm not, I can't make any assumptions. Um, but I was super aggravated with the nurses because they started judging him. And they did it bluntly. Um, I mean, sitting right there at the nurse's station with everyone. He's 16 years old and he has a kid. Or he... You know, he's working the streets or whatever. Um, and so it got to the point where my nurse called the Tampa hospital he was being transferred to and was giving a report, and she was just very, very judgmental in her thing to where I'm thinking in my head, you're already setting this new nurse up that this is a horrible patient and that they're uncontrollable and that they're not managing it correctly and that they're... I, it was uncalled for. I seriously wanted to, like, hang up the phone in the mid of her conversation because she's already setting that bad attitude, and I know it's so easy to get into that habit um, when you're around that so long and to automatically judge people. But as nurses, we honestly, honestly, honestly need to be advocates for our patient. And when we don't agree with something that they're doing or that they believe that we don't believe, we need to draw that line um, and not let it cross into our professionalism because it was severely compromised and it really, really aggravated me that they were doing this because they automatically treated this patient differently. They were extremely harsh when talking to them. Very, and I, and I mean, to a degree, I, I understand that desire to like get the point across, but there's other ways to do it than, than being like, well, you're not going to live much longer, you know, to see your baby if you don't do this. Yes, that's true. But the way they, they were saying it and just the tones that they were using with him aggravated me so much. And so, if anything, I just want to reinforce and, you know, be your own nurse. Be you. Treat your patients with respect, no matter who they are, whether they're an inpatient, whether they're a 16-year-old kid who's not taking their medications or who doesn't know what's going on. You don't know anybody's story but your own. You don't know what they're going through, what they've been through. Don't put that out there. Keep professional. Treat each patient the same way you would any other patient. Um, because if you don't, I saw it Friday or Monday, it greatly impacts the care that is given. Um, and personally, I think that's just sad. So be advocates for your patient. Um, treat your patients. Keep a professional boundary. Keep a professional attitude when dealing with them. Um, even if you don't agree, I just, I can't stand it when I see nurses doing that because it just really irritates me. Um, and you cause others to have a bad attitude and you cause others to treat them differently. And I just don't think it's fair. What if someone did that to you? That's all I'm really going to say about that. Um, I'm going to switch topics here. Um, this week, let's see, we have... Um, Class tomorrow, like I said, we have that exam retake, and then we have study hall on Friday. Um, my family is actually having a big family party because 
a lot of families leaving this summer and working at camps and stuff, so we're all going to have a family party. But I would like to do a video again this weekend um, because I know some of you have questions you've been asking and I'd like to answer those for you um, and just kind of catch up because I know this video a lot of the time I was complaining and um, ranting and raving, but that's nursing school, right? So... Um, if there's any questions you guys have or any topics you'd like me to discuss in my video coming up either this weekend or later this week, um, please feel free to comment or send me a message or something and I will try and do include those into this video that's coming up. Um, thanks for watching and let me know if you like the video, thumbs up it and just remember to be advocates for your patient and to keep professionalism because definitely makes a difference in the care that you give and the care that the patient receives and how they feel. Um, and it might just in the end impact how they come out and take care of themselves after their stay in the hospital. So you never know how you can impact a patient and hopefully you can impact them positively and in a way that's going to want them to take care, better care of themselves. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys later.